Jason Dumin, everybody. Give it up for Mike, everyone. So good. Oh, have you used the water closet yet? The green in there is fantastic. It's not a joke. It just, I, thank you for the beautiful walls. I just was so at peace. It was wonderful. Anyway, uh, I'd like to get to know each other a little bit, and mainly me telling you about me, since I have the microphone. Sound good? All right. Uh, something you should know about me is I am a middle child. Any middle children here? Yeah. All right. Who cares? <laughs> right? Being a middle child is just a preparation for being a disappointment in life because your parents, you're like two years, you were the baby of the family. And then one day your parents just looked at you and just said, you are not enough. <laughs> Let's get another one. Maybe a girl this time. That's what happened in my family. Heather. Uh, but yeah, being a middle child, uh, it, I, I realized recently I put off a pretty strong middle child energy. I was at an open mic and uh, the, the, the host came up to me and he's like, hey man, do you smoke weed? And I don't. I don't smoke weed. I pass on grass every time. Uh, I am the dare success story. Uh, <laughs> Like, Officer Mike came in, and he was like, hey, uh, these are what drugs do to people. And I said, no thanks, can I pet your dog? And I was like, these are all wins. Um, but yeah, so he said, hey, do you smoke weed? And I said, no, and that's when I realized, at 43 years old, that's the first time anybody has offered, or even talked to me about possibly smoking weed with them. Because I put up that middle child energy, where it's like, nah, it's just better just leave him alone. He's middle. He's mid, as the kids say. <laughs> I'm also an introvert. Any introverts here tonight? All right, okay, I could, I could tell the true introverts because they quietly raised their hands. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're here, even if you're not. It's important to get out and be with people. We need us, right? We need to be connected, get out there, get real. Uh, and I just wanted to, you know, you know, we're often an overlooked community, introverts. And we're usually fine with that. But uh, there's a lot of talk about like trigger words and words that are offensive to different communities. So I just want to share something real quick, just to educate, raise awareness about a word that people use all the time. They're not really thinking. And it's a different time. So I want us just to be cautious. And it's a word that's brought a lot of harm to the introverted American community. And it's hello. <laughs> if we could just calm down on that. And uh, it's not so much that introverts are shy, it's that y'all are just so exhausting. <laughs> can, you just, can you just slow down with so much of all of what you're doing? <sighs> Thank you. I do appreciate it. This is a good introvert zone right here because y'all are over there and the other introverts are right here. So thank you for being close up with like, my people. Um, I was gonna wear, a, I was gonna iron a shirt for tonight, but the iron said, use cool iron if necessary. The shirt said, use cool iron if necessary, but my iron is a total dweeb. <laughs> Where do you even get a cool iron? Does it have like a leather jacket or something? Is it like, hey, like the Fonz? For the young people, the Fonz is Barry from Barry, or uh, the lawyer from Barry. No, never mind. that was bad. <laughs> Moving on. Been thinking a lot about my fears lately. Uh, one of my current fears is that when I die, my, my, I'll bring shame on my family because they'll look at my computer and they'll look at my search history and they'll be like, what happened here? How many times did he have to look up how to spell millennial? <laughs> like I, I have tried every which way to spell that word and I even wrote it down here. It's still wrong. I don't know how to make it right. I don't know. There's too many L's. <laughs> I went to Costco recently. Anybody love Costco? I love Costco. I had a hot dog today. It was so good. Uh, I went to Costco, and there were two ambulances outside, which kind of freaked me out, talking about my fears, like fear of death, for sure. Like right now, dying a little bit. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> There were two ambulances outside, and that like, worried me. Like, what could be so bad at Costco that they would need two ambulances? 
And then I remembered that everything comes in bulk at Costco. I went there to get my flu shot. So now I have eight of them. So I'm good for a while. But uh, I'm a dad. Any dads out there? Yeah, being a dad's awesome. Uh, one of the reasons I always wanted to be a dad was because my dad was so great. He always made me feel safe. Uh, and he's still alive, F FYI. He's, still, he's fine. He lives in Kirkland. Uh, but he always made me feel safe. And one time, I was afraid of everything as a kid. And I, I was afraid that someone was going to break into our house and murder our whole family. And I was like four years old. And so I asked my dad, Dad, what do I do if someone breaks into our house and they want to murder our whole family? He said, this is what you do, Jason. Just lay real still. Pull your sheets all the way up to your neck. They'll think your head's cut off. They'll move on. <laughs> I love you. Good night. <laughs> Best advice he ever gave me. But I'm still here. <laughs> and I still sleep that way for safety. So thanks, Dad. But uh, yeah, being a dad, like I, I, being a dad is very rewarding, is something that I have heard. I'm still waiting for my son's Father's Day card from last year. So good news is he's got another chance coming up here the third Sunday of June. That's when Father's Day is. Father's Day is a scam of a holiday because what other holiday does the person getting honored have to go around and remind people that it's the third Sunday in June? None of you are writing that down and all of you are going to forget except the dads because we know that if we tell people, we'll be the jerk for reminding folks. But you don't see Jesus going around in December going, Psst, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> no. Father's Day we do. My, my daughter got me a Father's Day card last year. It was so nice. I, I don't know how she's going to top it this year, but uh, it said, open it up. It said, Dad, happy Father's Day. Thank you for being my free Uber driver. <laughs> Music sucks. Talks too much. Needs better snacks. Three and a half stars. <laughs> It's the nicest thing she's ever said to me. <laughs> she's 15. She's uh, currently in driver's ed. Uh, so pray for me. She has this really fun thing she does where she speeds up into parking spots. Uh, it's like she's in the Blues Brothers and she's on a mission from God. She's going to get the band back together. I realize that that's a very old reference and you are a lot younger than me. I'm the old man on the show, I realized. Uh, 43 years old. And uh, I married my high school sweetheart. Yeah, she's the best. We're both middle children. Somehow we found each other, and we like each other. We're like, let's, let's hang out. So we, that's working out pretty well. Uh, we have two kids, and uh, my wife is positive that she's going to outlive me, <laughs> which is good. It's good. Because like, last time I asked somebody out was to homecoming. And uh, so I don't know, like, are we still, like, showing up with limos on the first date? I don't, I don't know. Like, I need to die before her. Like, I have, I have no game. Whereas the kids say the day, I have no riz. I'm not a risly bear. And I, I told my, my daughter that I might say that, and she said, I will die. <laughs> so we'll see who's lying now. Um, but, uh, yeah, my wife probably will outlive me uh, because... Uh, she comes from a long line of, like, very old people. Her, her great-grandma lived to be 103. Crazy. So old. Uh, her grandpa, he's 92 years old. He just recently got remarried. Yeah. He can't see, can't hear, can barely drive, but he can still pull. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I used that right. I don't know. But... Uh, he, uh, yeah, so we went to the wedding. It was a wonderful affair. The cake was blended. It was great. Uh, but afterwards, because they're old. They're old. It, okay. Uh, afterwards, uh, it led to a conversation with my wife and I saying, like, what would happen if one of us dies first? Because one of us is going to die first. Like, can we get remarried? And this is a very dangerous situation, right, gentlemen? You, one wrong answer. This is like a Jeremy Renner in the Hurt Locker situation. That bomb is going to blow up in your face. And, uh, and so I said to my wife, Kathy is her name, I said, well, Kathy, what, uh, what, mm, what, what do you want to do? Because I'm a leader. And she said, well, if I die first, I don't think I want you to get remarried. I said, oh, okay. Right, that was great, because now I knew the parameters of the situation. 
So I said to her, I said, well, babe, if I die first, I just want you to be happy. And she said, thanks, I will be. <laughs> I love you, good night. Thank you, everybody. Keep it going for Jason, everybody. Very funny. The Risley Bear. That is so good. Uh, that's so good. Um, you guys still having fun? Yeah, come on. Because we have another comedian for you. The very